If you live in America, then you've seen this, or this, or this. Strip malls have taken over American cities and suburbs. However, they're terribly designed and are inherently bad for cities. So why do we build them? Today, we're going to look at why cities built so many strip malls, and then we'll look at the negative implications they have created for municipalities. This is part one of my mini-series on strip malls, where we'll look at why strip malls are poorly designed, and in part two, at the positive changes cities are making to rethink these spaces. So, why did we build strip malls? Well, following World War II, more Americans had cars, which meant that stores and shopping destinations could relocate out of downtown areas. But the automobile just got better and better. soon it wasn't just luxury or a convenience, it became part of the American standard of living. Having a large amount of parking was seen as the future, and made it convenient for people with cars. It was different, it was unique. In the 1950s, many people were used to living in downtown areas. So when a new style of shopping and dining became available, it was seen as cool and futuristic. Back then, the negative aspects we now know were not yet known. It seemed like a great idea at the time. The idea being that if more people have cars, then, well, we should just build massive parking lots to hold them all. Today, however, we are left with the negative aspects these developments created. They were not in fact futuristic designs, and they caused cities to sprawl and waste land on huge amounts of parking. Strip malls are relics of the past from an era where inefficient car-centric design was the norm. Strip malls played a large role in facilitating the car-centric design of our suburbs. Having such large parking lots requires a ton of land. This land that has a giant parking lot on it doesn't really provide much value. What it does do, however, is spread everything out. If you have a grocery store with a giant parking lot and then two fast food restaurants with large parking lots, it causes these buildings to be distanced apart. This distance causes a lot of problems. First, it decreases the walkability of the shopping, and second, it forces municipalities to build longer roads. Roads are hugely expensive to build, and many strip malls lie on what's known as a strode. In case you are not familiar with what a strode is, it's this. A strode is a concept in urban planning that is a combination of street and road. As far as the terminology goes, roads are primarily designed to efficiently connect two places using higher speeds and limited access. Streets, on the other hand, cater to slower speeds and provide access to properties, allowing for walking, shopping, and local activities. The strode does a lousy attempt at combining these two functions and essentially creates a setting that's neither efficient for driving, nor safe and appealing for pedestrians. This mix leads to higher infrastructure costs and challenges in maintenance due to the need to accommodate the conflicting uses of a street and a road. And with the higher infrastructure costs, it can cost as much as $10 million a mile to build and maintain these strodes. Strodes and strip malls made a lot of American cities look visually unappealing. Imagine you're driving, and instead of interesting, unique little shops or beautiful open spaces, you get these endless rows of bland and boxy buildings. They're just sitting in the middle of a sea of asphalt parking spaces. They are bare utilitarian structures built with cheaper materials and not much personality and they caused a shift in the way that we build cities. Instead of creating spaces that have architectural character and an emphasis on community, they are spaces that are bland and don't really make people feel good about being in them. It's the opposite of quality urban design. Strip malls are unexciting, and each one is no different than the one across the street or across the country. Strip malls essentially made a lot of America look the exact same. 
Look at this photo of a suburb in Illinois. Now look at this photo from a suburb in Texas. They basically look the same. Now what if I told you that the image of the Illinois suburb was actually the Texas suburb? Which it is because I switched the photos. You can't really tell the difference. And that's an unfortunate point. Architecture should serve as a reflection of the city and space that people choose to spend time in. While large parking lots might seem beneficial for shoppers, they have significant economic and environmental drawbacks. Large parking lots aren't just bad for the city, it's also expensive for the developers and owners of these centers. These parking lots are very expensive to build and require maintenance, all of which comes with high financial costs. They basically serve as a lose-lose scenario. From a land use perspective, vast parking areas represent a missed opportunity. The land occupied by these underused parking spaces could house additional retail, green areas, or community gathering spots, all of which might contribute more to local economies and the well-being of residents. So then that begs the question, why are there so many parking spots when such a small fraction of them are usually utilized? Well, this proliferation of parking arose from a policy known as minimum parking requirements. These requirements stipulate that almost every kind of building, whether an office, mall, store, or movie theater, not only have parking spaces, but often a specific number of parking spaces based on the building's size or use. For strip malls, this can mean that for every 1,000 square feet of building space, there is a required four to six parking spaces. When you are building large big box retail stores, that leads to a lot of parking that will likely never be fully utilized. Strip malls have certainly created a lot of negatives for our cities. However, we are starting to see a shift away from strip malls, as some municipalities begin to repurpose these centers into more vibrant spaces. In part two of this mini-series on strip malls, we'll look at some examples of how strip malls can be saved. I recently started a Patreon to help make my channel even better. I want to continue spreading the word and sharing awesome examples of how cities are fixing their urban design issues. If you enjoy my videos and want to support my effort of spreading the word on good urban design, then consider joining my Patreon. It's only $2 a month, and if you are interested, you can find the link in the description below. And in the meantime, don't forget to subscribe.